Hi, this is Amy from the Alt E Store. I am here at the Alt E 8th Annual Installer Conference, and I'm here with Mark from Outback Power, and we are going to talk a bit about their AC coupling. Hello. Hi, Amy. Thanks for inviting us for this conversation. My pleasure. Well, this this has been a very big, very popular topic of talking about how to add battery backup to an existing grid tight system. And I know Outback used to have a solution and now you're you're talking about a better solution. We are actually. There's one technique that we have called AC coupling and we had an AC coupling solution in the past which is where you take the output of a grid tight inverter and you hook it up to our output and a backup load panel. Right. And we act in normal mode of operation, just like a piece of copper wire from the main panel to the grid tight inverter and the backup load, so we're somewhat invisible. Right. Unless the grid goes out, and then we become like the new grid, if you will, to the grid tight inverter and allows it to stay on and produce right. PV power for the loads. Right. So what would become problematic sometimes is if the load drops below what the PV is producing, all that energy comes back onto our batteries right. in an unregulated charge. Right. So our old solution uses something called remote operated circuit breaker that would, when the voltage would get high, we would detect that high voltage and we would open up the circuit. Right. So that was our, our old solution. And so what have you come up with for a new solution? Well, we're using something, a technique, some people call it frequency dithering, we call it ah. frequency shift. Yeah. So we're actually uh, shifting the frequency. I think SMA was one of the first to employ this technique right. with the Sunny Boy and the Sunny Island. Yes. Um, others uh, have employed this technique as well. Uh, we like to think that we've perfected the technique, of right? Um, <laughs> So the uh, technique that we use is um, we actually look for not just one voltage target like some of our competitors do. We look and see if the voltage is up at the, up the highest charging rate, which is the absorb voltage. Right. And if there's time on the charge timer, then we will allow it to uh, uh, deliver current to the battery bank at that voltage level. Okay. And then once the charge timer goes out, then it drops down to the float, and then if there's time oh. on the on the float timer, then we allow it to send energy to the battery at that level. Now, for some reason during this period, um, the voltage goes four tenths volt or higher, right. then we will start shifting the frequency. And for most inverters, grid time inverters at 60.5 hertz, Right. They will turn off. Right, right. Right. So they'll think that there's something wrong with the grid. Right. And with you being the grid. Right. That that they're doing what they're supposed to do because of UL 1741 shutting off if something goes wrong. Exactly. So it's making the grid tight inverter um, smart enough to turn off when the battery is getting full. Right. And so what would happen, we even, even beyond the absorb and the voltage, we also, when, if those timers, those charge timers should time out, then the next voltage target is the cell RE target. Even though we're not, quote, selling, if you right. will, um, it's you, it has to have a voltage target. So if it ever exceeds that, right. it's saying, okay, this is the level of the battery. Okay. And so most people would like push that up to like maybe the float voltage. Mm -hmm. So if the grid time inverter does shut off, it's going to go down to the open circuit voltage, and then it, it you know if it starts getting a, that charge again, it, it has a way to come up before it turns the grid time inverter off again. Okay, and so when you said RE cell mode, that is, if if you were just set up in regular conditions and your battery gets to a certain level and the grid was up, that's when you start selling to the grid. Yeah, when we're DC coupled, right, right. which we aren't in this case, but let's Correct. say that we had, you were using a radiant inverter just like with our charge controller and you were DC coupling the energy to our battery side right. of the inverter, then that's the voltage target that we set up when it reaches that level, then we know there's enough energy that we can sell off to yeah, the grid. Yeah, so, so you're, you're using that for two different purposes. Yes. If, mm -hmm. if you were in that mode, that's what it'd be for. But now you're reusing it to say, all right, 
we're full. Yeah, we have to have a target that right. that says, okay, the battery's at this yeah. at this level, and if the target exceeded, then we can say, okay, now start shifting the frequency. Fantastic. So you were talking about doing the float and absorb. So are you actually doing multi-stage charging? -ish? We call it kind of an ish. <laughs> you know, it's kind of a pseudo charge, okay, if you will. Yeah. So uh, rather, but some of our competitors, you just set a certain voltage. Hey, if it exceeds this. That way the voltage is kind of going all over the place. So right. we're trying to maintain, you know, if it, if it never finished an absorb cycle, we want to let it finish, same with the float, and then, then let the cell or E target take over. And then the user can set that wherever it makes sense. Right. But the one thing that, that really I think is, is very unique about this system is we not only look at the voltages, but we look at the current. Uh -huh. Because even if you're at this, say, absorb voltage, which we, and you're not exceeding it, the battery could still be taking on too much current. Right. Right? So what we do is we monitor the AC charger input current limit, uh -huh. which is user settable. Right. And let's say that was set to six amps AC, which is about 30 amps DC of current coming onto the battery. And if it goes above that, then it will um, also start shifting the frequency up. So this was, uh -huh. One of the reasons people would ask, they'd say, well, Mark, what do you think about uh, AC coupling? I'd usually say, don't do it. <laughs> you know, unless you're just gonna be for battery backup a couple weeks a year, because it is hard on the batteries right. normally. Right. But what's nice about this method is that it protects the, the batteries at voltage and current. Right. So you're not gonna trash your batteries. You know, it's possible if the, if the load, backup loads are, are way down or turned off or whatever. You could get some cycling, but it's not going to cycle the batteries in a harmful way. Right, right. And so that also allows you to not have to crazy oversize your battery bank to accommodate right. the full current. So if a smaller battery bank is adequate for your backup loads, you can do you can do a smaller bank because you can control how much current is going into it. That's true. That's true. Another consideration in this is also the ratio of our inverter to the mm -hmm. grid time inverter. Yeah. We like we like the grid time inverter to be seventy five percent or less. Right. Okay. And the reason for that is uh, most grid time inverters they do a source impedance test, and they'll look and see if they're hooked up to a grid. So they'll either shift the, try and shift the frequency, or some. Um, put like a little notch at the peaks of the sine wave. And if, the, if they're hooked up to a, a stiff grid source, that frequency can't be shifted or the notches get pushed down. Yep. And they say, okay, I'm hooked up to a real grid. Yep. I'll go ahead and sell out. Right. Well, if we were at the same power level, we, we, they might be able to overcome our frequency or those notches don't get pushed down right. and then they'll go offline. Right. So, okay. and then the other aspect of that is, is our charger is a 5kW charger. So we're not really rated for full okay. power anyway. Okay. So we really want people to stick to the ratios. But another nice thing about our AC coupling is that we um, are still doing some testing right now, but we believe we're gonna be able to stack them uh, up to three in parallel. That was my next question. Thank yes. you very much. That's been the problem where we'll get a call, hey, I have a 10 kilowatt uh, inverter that I need to, to, I need to add batteries to. Right. Great. Um, hmm. <laughs> okay. So this, mm -hmm. this gives us that ability now. Right. That's fantastic. And so um, do you feel comfortable that this can be used for lead acid as well as lithium batteries? Yeah, it, it shouldn't um, it shouldn't be a problem. The only thing I would I would say is you know consult with the battery manufacturer sure. in terms of the settings. Yeah. Um, I know that the uh, some lithium batteries four tenths of a volt can make a lot of difference. Yeah. So and I know some uh, lithium uh, uh, technologies are, are different. So, right. Right. So, so you just wanna, check with the the battery yes, manufacturer mm -hmm, and make sure that our our operational characteristics match up well right. with the battery. Yeah. So is this uh, solution software upgradable or? Glad you asked that <laughs> question. So yes, it is just a software upgrade. Fantastic. We are not going to, this 
you will never order like an AC coupling firmware version from the factory. Okay. So just use the standard, uh, you know, Radian, uh, you know, our, our GS8048A-01 right. or mm -hmm. the GS4048, okay. the 4000 yep, watt yep. version, dash 01. And it does require a Mate 3S. A Mate 3S, okay. So it has to have that, a Mate 3S. makes sense, that's fine. With the latest firmware version uh, 1.4.x or, or newer okay okay and then um, the in terms of the uh, inverter firmware that is something that needs to be downloaded from our website okay so this uh, this will never be something that ships with it gotcha right okay so uh, all right that, yeah. that's that's reasonable that's easy to do with the mate 3 Right. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Very easy. So it's just the there's no additional cost. Great. Um, it's just you know a set of batteries and a radiant inverter. Fantastic. And and you're good to go. And um, any plans on getting the FXRs to support this, or it's really the the radiant? I think it's just going to be the radiant. Yeah. Yeah. The the FXR I think has its its own place in the world right, right, right. <laughs> of yep. inverters yep. and so yeah we're going to stick with the radian Makes sense. and then uh, a couple other things I wanted to mention about this um, this being a feature rich solution <laughs> uh, we also have uh, you can adjust the delay on the steps oh. so when I was doing the testing in our lab I found that um, you know when it would exceed that target by the four tenths it happened just immediately. Ah, okay. So you might want to be able to add some delay. So the sure. default is the 20 milliseconds on each frequency step, but you can increase that up to as much as five seconds mm -hmm. per frequency step. Okay. So you can kind of add your own delay if you want to, you know, give it a little bit of chance right, so it doesn't right. just shut off right. immediately. And then the other thing that we support, uh, some of the uh, UL1741 SA compliant inverters also have an optional function called frequency watt, frequency slash watt. Oh. So what happens is we, if we were to increase the frequency beyond the 60.5, mm -hmm. the frequency per watt inverter will start to feather back its output. Oh yes. So, so we'll go up as high, I think it's 64.5 hertz, all inverters have to go offline. Right. Right? But if it's in this frequency watt mode, you, so you can actually, it's sort of like a closed loop control. So as we increase the frequency, the output starts coming down. Uh -huh. And if the voltage starts dropping down, then we start dropping our frequency down. And so it's not all or nothing. You can, by shifting your frequency, you can tell that grid tight inverter, slow down a little bit, mm -hmm. but don't turn off. Right. And then you say, okay, that's it, I'm done. Here's my final frequency offering and right. Out. So it's part of the UL1741 SA oh, fantastic. Um, okay. spec. It's an optional thing. Right. It's not a requirement. Right, right. So some okay. inverters may have it, some may not. Yep. Okay. Wow. Well, thank you so much. That's not all. There's more. <laughs> <laughs> so, so. Um, some places, like especially in Puerto Rico, I know that's a big market for Absolutely. you guys. Uh, in Puerto Rico, we got some special requests. They want a generator support. How do I use ah. a generator, right? And and without backfeeding my generator, right? Right. So we came up with a technique. Uh, we have a um, a relay that's. Uh, the coils are driven by AC, 240 volts AC. Oh. So we bring in the L1 and L2 lines mm -hmm. from the grid time inverter onto one side of the relay, and it's a double pull, double throw relay, so it goes to the, on the normally closed lines over here. Yeah. That goes to our output bus bar where everything's connected together, right? Uh. So in series is this relay. Yeah. And so we hook the coil wires up to the generator input right. of our inverter, because we have that second input. That's yeah. the other nice thing about the radiant, it's got the dual inputs. Right. So we take the uh, coil wires, hook them up to the L1 and L2 on the, on the gen input. And so if anybody turns on the generator, even manually, as soon as live AC hits the generator inputs, it opens up the connection on the relay yep. so the, the grid time inverter doesn't backfeed the generator. So that's really a, a nice nice feature. Yeah. And it has its own little box, so kind of a big hefty relay, and it has its own little box uh, with some knockouts 
okay. the wires so you can mount it inside there might be just barely enough inside or you can mount it on a wall because it's all okay. it has its own little enclosure oh great so that's a really nice feature because yeah. anybody that wants to have firm backup power places like Puerto Rico or other places in the Caribbean right. they want to have firm power and you know a lot of yeah. people are choosing to go off grid right right absolutely yeah. yeah so this gives them the safety it gives them you know belts and suspenders as they say where you've got your, right. your solar you've got your generator and never the twain shall meet exactly nice yeah so we really we feel like this is a huge improvement over what we had before right and and just um, for people that may have the ROCB solution out there now um, we're recommending that they just disconnect it mm -hmm. they could still leave the the RCB in as a disconnect but you know right. remove the control wires going to it okay and um, just update the firmware. yeah just update the firmware and be a much better solution for them nice yeah. well thank you so much okay well thank you for inviting me it's been fun all right excellent okay. so this was Amy at the Alti store yeah. and here with with Mark from Outback Power and I hope you like the video if so give us a like and a share and be sure to go to our website at altistore.com where we've been making renewable doable since 1999. Thanks. <laughs>